Alyssa Toon is our Fort Bend County Regional Coordinator. Uh, she started off actually as our very first uh, district coordinator. Uh, she was working in Lamar Consolidated ISD and has now kind of expanded that role. Um, prior to working with Loving Houston, she was the outreach director at the Bridge Fellowship. And uh, the Bridge Fellowship has an awesome uh, partnership with Pink Elementary out in Lamar Consolidated. And they really have had a transformational impact together. So a few years ago, uh, Pink Elementary was rated a D minus. Fast forward five years later, they're now rated a B, which is amazing. And so the principal, um, the counselors, they attribute much of that success to the relationships developed between the bridge volunteers and the students and the staff at um, Pink Elementary. So Melissa played a huge role in making that happen. She was able to engage so many people from the bridge, that's actually where I met Melissa, uh, to mentor and serve and love the teachers and staff um, and students at Pink. So Melissa is the perfect person to share with us today about how we can engage our entire churches, our entire congregations in our church school partnerships. So Melissa, I'll let you take it from here. Uh, thanks, Marilyn, for that introduction. And yeah, I am passionate about engaging the whole church uh, in church school partnerships. I'm passionate about church school partnerships. Like Marilyn mentioned, I have seen what God can do um, when his people get outside the walls of their church and um, are willing to get messy and get involved in the lives of the community around them. And I fully believe that partnering with the school is the perfect mechanism for doing that in your community. And so today I really wanna spend some time talking about what does it look like to engage and activate your whole church? And we're gonna talk about that in two ways today. Um, part of that, we'll be talking about activating all of your church structure. So each of you as a church leader, as a, a member of a church, you are um, you participate every week in this church that has it's either an intentional structure or an unintentional structure. But there are mechanisms that exist within your walls that I believe can be activated with some intention and some strategy towards a church school partnership. So we're going to spend the first part of the talk talking about that. And then the last part is something that I've gotten extra passionate about over the last few years, which is activating all of your people. And when I say all of your people, I don't mean all as in the number of people that are coming to your church. I'm talking about that one individual that's sitting in that seat in your congregation. How do we activate all of them? Not just the person that's showing up on Sunday mornings, but all of who they are. How do we activate them to participate in the community around them? And because we're loving Houston and we're passionate about church school partnerships, how do we activate them in our church school partnerships? So we're going to talk about both of those aspects. Um, I can't remember if Marilyn mentioned or not, but I have my own nonprofit that focuses in specifically on engaging people in their business uh, life. And what does it look like to use that part of you um, in your community and specifically in a church school partnership? I believe there's an aspect of that that can come into play too. So we're going to talk about all of that today. And like I said, I believe that a church school partnership is a mechanism that can be used by every part of your church as a means to activate and engage people. Um, and so honestly, I, I want to back up before I go to that next slide. I want to walk you through, really, it's the process that I went through as a leader. Um, so like Marilyn mentioned, I was the outreach director for our church. Um, actually, I started out in children's ministry as the children's ministry director and then moved towards uh, leading the outreach of all of our global and local partners and as I was doing this, I began to get uh, frustrated, for lack of a better word, that there were these disconnects between some of our departments of our church and loving their community in a tangible, like outside of our walls way. And so I had to start asking myself some hard questions um, and hard and just in the sense that it took time and it took intention. I had to stop what I was doing of trying to make Sunday happen. And I had to really think about what are we doing as a people and what mechanisms do we have in place and how can we do this thing better or do it differently than we're doing it right now. And so the questions that you're about to see are just some of the questions that I started asking myself. And so I think they're questions that you can ask yourself or you can take back to your leadership and have them start asking. These are not all the questions, but these are ones that I think will get us started in the conversation. So some of the first things I started to ask were, how does our church currently serve the community? 
Um, obviously, you're at a lunch and learn about church school partnerships. So probably church school partnership is going to be on that list. And when I say on the list, I mean, put a sticky note up on the on the wall and get a pen and paper and start writing out a list of who does our church currently serve. Um, I think some of us, we can name four or five off the top of our head, but when you start writing them down and making a list, I think you'll start to see, dang, we serve like 15 different organizations, or we have this group over here that serves this organization, but really getting a picture, a kind of a lay of the land of who do we serve in our community? Because I think what will happen later is that you start to connect dots and start overlapping these things. And we'll get to that. Um, the next question I would tell you to start asking yourself is what are the current needs and goals of our church school partnership? So I'm going to go from the framework of you have already had a conversation with a church in a school, like you are plugged into a church school partnership. Um, have you had a meeting lately with your school to ask what are our goals? What are the things that you need support with? Um, oftentimes we do that at the beginning of a partnership, but before we know it, two school years have passed and we haven't had an intentional conversation about what our goals and our next steps are. So I would encourage you to begin to have those conversations if you're not currently, or if you have had them, put that on the wall. What are the goals and the needs that our school are saying we need support? We need a community partner to step in in these ways. The next thing I would tell you to look at is what internal programs do we have within our church? So Sunday happens, weekday programming happens. What mechanisms do we currently put our resources, our energy, are we pointing our people towards to make our church happen? Um, write those on the wall. And those are things like potentially you have pre-K ministry or children's ministry, student ministry. Do you do Sunday school? Do you do adult small groups? Do you have a missions team, a missions program? Do you have um, a recovery program? Anything that your church does, any wheel that you have created to help uh, lead people, people closer to God, to, um, to disciple people within your congregation, list those things out. Because here's what we're going to start to do next. We are going to start laying those answers to those questions on top of each other. And I believe as we do that, we will start to see how all of these things link up. And because we love church school partnerships, the last layer that we want to put on top of this thing is our church school partnership. When we lay the filter of our church school partnership on top of all the answers to these questions, where do those dots start to connect? Because I believe they do connect. I believe we have great things that we're asking our people to do within the walls of our church that if we can make slight bends and shifts in intentionality, we can start to take those resources and energy and point them outside the walls of our church pretty easily. And what has already become our DNA as a church, I think church school partnerships, when you lay that on top of that, those mechanisms become to a part of the DNA of your church school partnership. And your church school partnership becomes a part of the DNA of your church. It becomes a part of your common language. If you're constantly taking that filter of church school partnership and putting it over what you already do really well and what you're already asking your people to be involved in. So I, on my own, went through and kind of broke down. Um, I took a, a hypothetical church that has hypothetical programs. And then I took what we hear from schools as a time frame that they really um, begin to ask churches to participate and that's back to school. And I have laid those two things over each other. And we're just going to walk through kind of so you'll see what it looks like to roadmap this as you start to lay these layers on top of each other. What does this look like practically? What are our next steps? What are the things and the mechanisms that we're going to use to activate our people? Um, so we took back to school support. Our school has said we, in the fall, we would love for you to love our teachers well. We have some supplies that we typically need, and we would love for you to pray for us. So those are things that your school is asking for. And so then you're going to go back and you're going to look at the mechanisms that your church has within its walls and start to get practical about how those things can connect and start to connect those dots. So let's look at children's ministry, for instance. This hypothetical church has pre-K through fifth grade. They meet on Sunday mornings in a Sunday school type setting. And they're going to take on the task of encouragement. So their leaders are going to roll out butcher paper on a Sunday morning. They're going to hand kids markers and say, hey, our church partners with a school down the street. 
And those kids are going back to school and they need to feel fired up about the first day of school. Don't you love to be fired up about school? They want to be fired up too. So let's, we're going to work together to make signs that say, we love you. We're here for you. You can do this. But what you've done in that moment is you've begun those kids as early as pre-K thinking about this common denominator that they have with kids outside of themselves. They go to school just like they, you know, these kids go to school and they can use how they're wired. They can use talents and gifts that they have of being creative and encourage kids that are down the street at another school. So that's one mechanism that we've engaged. The next one we're going to look look at is student ministry. So this church has junior high, middle school and high schoolers that meet say on Wednesday nights and you want to engage their small group time. So you've asked your school to give you a list of all the personnel on their campus, their names, what they do on campus. And then you hand that to your student leaders and you say, okay, sixth grade girls, you're gonna take fourth grade teachers and you're gonna write notes to those fourth grade teachers before our small group time. And you're gonna look at eighth grade boys and you're gonna say, you have the custodians. And what you've done is you've given, you've made it personal for those groups of kids within student ministry. You've given them a name, you've given them a subject so that they can write, Dear Miss Smith, I hope you have a great year teaching math. I want you to know that we are thinking about you and we are here for you. And you've allowed a student in student ministry to make a personal connection to this school and you've begun to integrate that into the DNA of student ministry. We're gonna look at adult ministry. So you have this church, we're gonna say they do adult small groups. So you look at adult small groups and you say, we have this list of teachers that have come up with a wish list of things that they normally buy out of their own pocket. So adult small group ministry, we would love for you to take on a teacher for your group and get those supplies for her, put them in a basket, drop them off at the school with a note to let them know that she can reach out to you anytime she has prayer requests or anytime she has a need you are now her people. Um, And so at that, you've now activated the mechanism of adult uh, small groups in your church. What if this church has a food pantry or a missions team or an outreach uh, mechanism within their church? You can activate that by looking at them and saying, hey, the counselor at this partner school that we have um, has kids that show up on the first day of school and they're hungry. They didn't bring a lunch and they need go bags. They know they're gonna go home hungry. And so can you take the food that you already have in your food pantry that we give out to the community? Can you, again, just take a portion of that and shift it towards our church school partnership and potentially even stock the teacher's lounge with things that you already have that are in the food pantry that we give out to the community? Can we take that and point it towards our church school partner? Can you um, rally your team and write notes on those granola bars that we're going to put in the teacher's lounge that when they grab them, they know our church is thinking about them. But again, it's taking something that was already created. You already have a food pantry that's working hard, that's doing what they're called to do. And you're not telling them to stop doing that. You're just asking them to take a portion of their time of what they're already doing and turn it towards this thing that you've said is something we're investing in, which is a church school partnership. And then we can look at the whole Sunday morning experience. So on a Sunday morning, you've got your congregation there, present. You can invite your principal from your school to come over and talk about the school, um, give a synopsis of their needs, and take time during that service to pray for that leader. Um, At the church partnership that I was a part of, we invited any teachers or staff that wanted to attend our church on a Sunday morning. We had a special day assigned that they could come and do that. It was completely voluntary. We had like 15 teachers show up and we were able to pray over them on a Sunday morning. But what you've done is you go back and look at all of those moments of engagement. You have engaged the smallest person who enters the doors of your church all the way through to every single mechanism of your church. You've given them a way to make church school partnership a part of the conversation. And here's what I love about that. Here's the potential that that has. You possibly have on a Sunday after church, a family going out to eat for lunch and their preschooler, their second grader, their eighth grader, and the mom and dad are all four or five sitting around that table talking about this common thing that they participated in that was showing love to their community. You've got a preschooler saying, I made a sign for that school that, oh, you adopted a teacher. We're going to buy supplies for them. Like they have this common language. And so something that you have tried to integrate into the DNA of your church 
is now potentially integrating into the DNA of your church families that are there. And there's a common language, a shared experience. And what we hope to see happen through that is when we have people talking about the same things, we know that that builds momentum. And where we want that momentum to go is to deeper relationship so that when we make those asks later on of, hey, we need mentors to show up one time a week on this campus, that mom can have a conversation with her kindergartner and they can talk about, hey, do you think mom should go and mentor? And that kindergartner can encourage their mom because those are those kindergartners people too. They have started to make an investment in this school. And you've created this common energy, not only in your church, but also within the people of your church where they can offer support, accountability, and encouragement to each other to participate in this church school partnership in a way that we fully believe God will use to impact the community potentially for eternity. And so I I wanted this to look today just very practical because I think, like we said earlier, when you start to make actual lists and start looking at those lists as filters and start laying them on top of each other, it's not recreating wheels. It's just connecting wheels that already exist and giving them some strategy and some intentionality that we really do believe um, schools are open to and ready for and can have a huge impact. Um, Like I said, a few years back, I started to really get passionate about the actual individual in every seat of our church. Um, You know, the stat that I'm gonna throw up are kind of just some loose stats, but the average American spends about 150 hours a year in church. And that's like somebody who's dedicated, like they are showing up when the doors are open, they're participating in our programs, but the average American spends about 2000 hours a year working. So there's this huge portion of our people, and I'm talking like the portion of who they are, that is, living this other life. And I do think it really is a matter of discipleship to help people start to begin to think about when you're not participating in what the church is doing, what, what are you doing outside of that? And are you activating those portions of who God made you to be in your workplace, in your home, if you're a stay at home mom, in your neighborhood, if you're a mom who's home with other moms, like what all these other things that you're doing How are you pointing those towards loving your community well? And again, we believe that the church school partnership gives them a mechanism to be able to do that really well. And so I want to spend the next portion of our time talking about how do we get our people to flip this switch in their brain into thinking about, I mean, of course, we want them to participate in what the church is doing. We have to have people activated inside the walls of our church. And we want them to keep doing that, but how do we activate them to start thinking about all those other hours, all those other 2000 hours a year where they're doing their job? Is there a portion of that that they could turn towards loving their community well? So that's what we're gonna talk about for the next few minutes. Um, Ministry does not start when we enter the church doors. Ministry is every moment, all the time. And so how do we get our people to start thinking this way? Um, So again, we're going to workshop this idea. We're going to put it up on the wall and we're going to really tangibly start writing down things that we know or may not know about the people that are coming into the wall to the doors of our church. So we're going to start asking these questions of who do we have in our seats? What do our people do when they aren't in our building? And this is something that sadly, I don't think we as church leaders think about enough. I think we think about the people that are coming into the doors of our church And we sometimes think, what can they do while they're here? Like what, how can they participate in what we're doing as a church? And those are valid questions. I don't want to shame that in any way, but what if we started making lists about what do our people do when they aren't in our building? What do they do for their job? What do they, what are their talents and their special skills? What businesses do they own? What businesses do they work for? Like I mean, literally ask them, put a survey out and ask those questions so that you can start to see what do our people do when they're not with us? You may find that you have a massive population in your church in the medical field. That's good. We'll talk about in a minute how you can translate that into your church school partnership. You may see that you have lots of people with blue collar careers. You may have a huge population of stay at home moms. You may have artists, singers, actors. You have no idea until you ask the question. 
Um, and oftentimes people are a little hesitant to brag on themselves or to talk about that part of them because they're in the church. And so they put their church hat on and they are doing what has always been expected of them in church. And so they've compartmentalized. And so it's getting them to break down those walls of those compartments and really start to see how all of these things integrate. And I think as leaders, it's our role to be intentional in that and helping them walk through those questions of how do we take who you are in all aspects of your life and turn it towards the community? Um, and so we're going to talk about today, like, A, make a list so you know who you have in your seats, you know the population that you are um, working alongside, and then start making strategic asks based on the goals you and your school partner have made. So if your school is mentioning that they really need support with literacy and you have a huge population of stay-at-home moms with extra time on their hands who are passionate about, you know, maybe that you have a huge homeschool population. They may not participate in public school and educating their own kids, but they, they are passionate about education. Maybe there's a way for those two things to line up. So start making strategic asks. What I have seen is when you put an ask out to the whole church, we tend to have a tendency as people to just assume our neighbor is going to step up to that call and that we don't have to. But if I know that Joe and Mary are a nurse and a nurse practitioner and our school has a need for, um, they're hosting a medical festival and they need medical personnel to come and do well checks on people. And I emailed those two people specifically with that passion lineup of need and their skill set, their likelihood to say yes is much higher than if I just make a blanket ask to our congregation. And so we can't make those asks if we don't know who's sitting in our seat. So get curious about the people that are entering your doors. And then I would tell you to make the challenge. Don't be afraid to ask them to find one transferable skill. What is one thing that you, either a way that you're wired or something that you're really good at, what makes you so good at your job? How can you take one of those transferable skills and give up an hour a week and point that towards your church school partnership? An hour a month whatever that needs to look like for them to start, but to get them, give them the challenge of starting to take something that's outside what they would traditionally think volunteering looks like. Take something from who they are, how they're made up, something that they are passionate about, and take that and transfer it into the church school partnership that you're offering them to be a part of. Um, I really want to talk through some ways that schools have told us that people can take their job and point it towards the church school partnership, take what they do and what they're passionate about. So these are just some for instances that um, schools have mentioned that you can then take back to your school to get those wheels turning and get those sparks firing of how they can participate. So schools are asking all the time for guest speakers. We actually heard um, at our last one-on-one workshop that we had this week, um, Waller ISD, I loved hearing from their leadership because she said one of the things they're shooting for this year is the buyback time. For their teachers. They know their teachers are overwhelmed and they want to give them time back during their day. Well, guess what? They need help to do that. And if your church has people who want to come and talk about their career on a campus and be a guest speaker, you may buy a teacher 30 minutes of something that's still enriching her kids, but it gives her a moment to step away and go take care of other things that she needs to take care of. So you've allowed your church member to use something that they're passionate about to influence students and you've blessed a teacher by giving them a time to go to the bathroom or check their email or whatever they need to do in that 30 minutes. Um, there could be special projects or special events. Maybe they're having a science night and they need all your STEM people that work in the STEM industry to come and do a booth at their science night. Um, maybe there's field trips that there are people who work at a hospital or work at a factory who they could line up an opportunity for one of your classes in your school to come and have a field trip. Enrichment opportunities. Maybe you have a huge art community with full of artists and they could host a paint till you faint type night for families on a campus. Um, the, the possibilities are endless as to what you, how you can start making those things line up if you get creative and start offering and asking and getting curious. Um, something that I've seen happen a lot over the last year in, the, in Lamar Consolidated specifically um, we've had multiple businesses who have been able to take their overstock items that they have as a business and support schools in the community with things that honestly y'all would just be getting thrown away 
because they are taking up space either in a warehouse or I'll give you a, for instance, um, Dollar Tree Distribution. I have a connection with their leadership and they had 50 baby cribs that were literally going to get thrown away because they could not store them in their storage anymore. And I was able to talk to, because of church school partnerships, because of relationships, I was able to connect them to the teen parenting program and Lamar consolidated and teen parents got brand new cribs. But these are things that if we don't start asking these questions, these things are out there, but our people are not flipping that switch themselves because they've compartmentalized. So helping them break down those walls and think about what is it that I do? Like I build the, you know, my husband's in construction, what construction supplies are we getting ready to throw away? Maybe I could stop and call my church school partnership partner and ask them, Hey, you may not need this, but is there something else in the district that you think might be able to utilize these? But it's allowing people to start looking through, again, every aspect of their lives and connecting those dots. Um, obviously, mentoring is a huge need. Every single school and school district we talk to right now is asking for mentors to step onto their campuses. Sometimes that's daunting for people and they don't know how to step into that. But if you switch that to them to using their job in their mentoring relationship, I think sometimes they're more likely to step in. Things like career planning, college prep. We just had an enrichment for our team where we talked about the huge need for adults to step into the lives of kids and help them think through how to get to college or how to make it through college, how to go get a job if college is not your path. Um, maybe your there are people sitting in your congregation who have job openings right now in their place of business that a student could step into, a student's parent could step into, um, but creating that platform for them to be able to share that information with their school partner, I think is really important. And it's a way, again, for people to utilize all of who they are. Um, is there a business that's represented within your congregation who would start a mentoring initiative within their place of business? And they may start recruiting people that don't even go to your church, but they can still participate in your church school partnership. Again, integrating this into the DNA of every aspect of who we are and what we do so that it's just a no brainer. When we think about serving the community, we look at our church school partner first and we go, okay, how is there a way to link these two things together first? Um, and if there's not, is there another organization close to the school that we can link these things to that will still have influence in our church school partnership because we're looking at the whole community and how can we participate in all of these areas? Again, I really do believe that when we, we can really start to look at our church school partnerships as a discipleship tool. We have done a good job as, of, as churches of growing people within the walls of our church. And I really believe the time is now to send them out, to get them out of the walls of our church and activate them to use, I think it's an act of discipleship to go use what you learned here to influence the community around you. And I believe that that represents this verse. <laughs> to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, um, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Like, it's, it's time. It's time for our people to do that. And I, if you can't hear it, I am passionate about the fact that our schools are just a sitting target waiting for all of these resources to be poured into it's just our job as church leaders to get people to be kingdom minded and to think, how can I use all of me to go and participate in this place that is just waiting for our resources to be handed to them? And, and like was mentioned just earlier, there are challenges and there are times when the schools aren't ready or they don't know how to utilize our resources. So it is a dance, but we need dancers <laughs> who are ready to step in and get involved in that. And so um, I don't know. I'm just passionate about how we can get intentional and strategic. And I hope this was helpful for you today, just to get those conversations and those questions clicking in your own brain so that you can then begin to talk to your people about how to get themselves to ask themselves those own questions. Mm -hmm.